Hello, today at uh, our premises on Bally McKinney Road, Drogheda, we're going to be having two services. Uh, we're going to have some water baptisms again. We're going to have the Daily Bread Cafe serving teas and coffees and snacks after both services. And I'm sure everyone's going to have a great time praying for good weather. But uh, here we're at our online service and I believe the Lord is going to minister into your heart today as we share together. Today is the 4th of July. Many of our friends in the United States are celebrating Independence Day. Well, we're celebrating Dependence Day. We're celebrating today that we are totally 100% dependent on the Holy Spirit of God. And I pray that through our worship and through the Word of God today, through the special song, I really pray that God's going to minister into your heart and spirit. Does your life have joy? Is your heart truly filled with joy? I am the true vine, 
You are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you are looking for happiness, for true joy that does not depend on circumstances, you need to look to Jesus because he wants to give you his joy. And not only does he want to give you joy, but God, the creator of the universe, Jesus, who resurrected from the dead, wants your joy to be complete. Abide in him and he will abide in you. And from our true vine, you will bear fruit in abundance. During the week, I was chatting with a young woman who is expecting a baby. And uh, as we were talking, she suddenly jumped and put her hands over her belly. And I'm like, what's wrong? Is there there something wrong with the baby? She said, no, the baby's just hiccuping. Now, um, I'd never heard of this before. Now, Now, I find the whole development of an unborn child in the womb absolutely wonderful and miraculous. I, I, just, th- I just think it's an amazing example of the creative power of God. But uh, I'd never heard of a baby hiccuping. Now, I'm sure there's plenty of mothers watching this who are just saying, oh, man, he knows nothing. Well, look, I've ne- obviously never been pregnant. OK, but... Um, Now, babies don't hiccup in the sense that we hiccup. When we hiccup, it's obviously air. And so I'm I'm saying, I said to this mother-to-be, I said, well, um, 
you know, babies can't, surely they can't hiccup because they don't breathe air in the womb. And she said, no, but they practice breathing. And I thought, man, she's got that wrong. So I went and looked it up and she was absolutely right. Babies practice breathing while they're in the womb, getting ready for the big day when they're born. And obviously they're not breathing in air, you know, they're just amniotic fluid. But uh, nevertheless, they practice breathing. And in the womb, of course, there's, there's no breathing. A baby doesn't breathe in the womb. The baby does receive oxygen in an absolutely miraculous process because oxygen uh, is carried by, through our bodies by, our, by blood. You know, the whole way our lungs work is that they, they draw in air and then the oxygen goes through, through the lungs into our bloodstream, carries it around the body, and then uh, obviously, because our body needs that oxygen, and then the waste, carbon dioxide, is carried back to the lungs so that we can breathe it out. I mean, it, it, that, that in itself is a miracle. But of course, a mother's blood circulation and her unborn baby's blood circulation are entirely separate. So what happens is the mother's uh, blood flows into the placenta and then the placenta transfers oxygen through into the unborn baby's blood. Uh, that's, that's incredible. I mean, that's, and, and then not only that, but there's another channel back where the carbon dioxide from the unborn baby is passed back into the placenta and passed back into the mother's bloodstream and taken to the mother's lungs so she can breathe out the carbon dioxide that was has come from the unborn baby as well as her own carbon dioxide. And these are created by God in such a wonderful way that there's no intermingling. The, you know, the, 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 the placenta, the part of the placenta that puts the oxygen into the baby's blood is totally separate from the part of the placenta that takes the carbon dioxide out of the baby's blood. It truly is miraculous. You know, the more I understand about just the human body and how we're made, the more I am in awe of the complexity of God's creation and the awareness that there's no way this could ever have come about by some random chance processes. But anyway, the baby doesn't actually breathe air when it's in the womb. I think we all realize that. And in fact, when a baby is born underwater, some people uh, have water birth. I've always thought, gosh, that must be really dangerous. The baby will drown under the water. But when the baby emerges from the mother's womb into the water, as long as the water is a similar temperature, around 37 degrees, then the baby doesn't try to breathe in the water. There's something, there's something God has built into that baby. And you know what? You can keep the baby for a, a, up to 10 seconds or longer under the water and the baby's still breathing, well, re receiving oxygen perfectly well through the, the umbilical cord. Then the baby is lifted up out of the water and the change in temperature causes the baby to <gasps> draw breath. But here's the thing, whether you're talking about a water birth like that or just a, a norm, normal birth, once that baby draws breath, there's no turning back. Once it's taken that first breath, there's no way the baby can ever go back once more to, uh, to, to living underwater or living in a womb surrounded by the fluid. The baby needs air. As soon as it's taken its first breath, it is absolutely dependent on air for every other, for the, for the entire rest of its life. Now, you could say, well, that, the baby's become dependent. Yes, the baby has become dependent. But with that dependency comes freedom. Because if a baby doesn't, never takes a breath, then the baby can't walk. The baby will never talk. Then the baby will never run or dance. The, the baby will never uh, be able to learn to read. The, the baby will, will never meet somebody and fall in love and have children and all the kind of stuff that is part and parcel of our human experience. The baby won't be able to do any of these things if it doesn't become dependent on air. And we tend to think that freedom comes from independence. Now, I can understand why a nation would want to celebrate independence. I, I get that. I don't understand why churches make a big deal of Independence Day in the United States because it's not because in the Christian gospel 
Freedom does not come from independence. It comes from dependence. It comes from being absolutely reliant on the Holy Spirit. It comes from the moment that we take that first breath. We are so dependent on air that we cannot live without it and will die if it is denied to us for even a short length of time. Jesus said in John chapter 15, starting to read at verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Now, of course, in salvation, we are born again. Uh, most of us watching this online service have been born again. We've, we've, we've prayed, we've asked Jesus into our life, we've received forgiveness of sins, we've become a new creation in Christ Jesus. If you haven't taken that step, then please, before this online service finishes, take the time to pause uh, and, and just, just ask Jesus to come into your life and save you and accept his forgiveness and receive the Holy Spirit into your life to give you new life. But in salvation, we are born again. Now, born again is not just a description of a particular kind of Christian. You can't be a Christian without being born again. Uh, we read about being born again in John chapter 3. We read about being born again in First Peter chapter 1. And also, of course, the word regeneration crops up in scripture. Now, regeneration, it, uh, it's simply another word for being born again. And that we read about regeneration in the letter of Titus and also in the gospel of Matthew. Now, when we're born again, we have to realize that in Greek, and if you were watching our midweek Bible study this week, you'd have known this, but in Greek, the same word is used for wind, breath, and spirit, pneuma. And we get English words out of that, pneumonia, uh, pneumatic, pneumatology, which is the study of the Holy Spirit. And the verb is apneo, uh, where sleep, if when we talk about sleep apnea, we're, we're, because you apnea is to take a breath or receive the wind or receive the spirit. That's what apneo means in Greek. And so sleep apnea is when we, when somebody's sleeping and they don't take the breaths that they should be taking. Now, before physical birth, we've said the oxygen, the carbon dioxide, they, they, it's all about how the placenta and the umbilical cord works and everything else with the unborn child. Before the spiritual birth, the Holy Spirit is at work. I mean, it's not like the Holy Spirit is totally separate and not having any impact on your life before you come to Jesus. I mean, you know what? It's only by the grace of God that we're even alive, that we take a physical breath. You know, where every one of us is, is a heartbeat away from eternity. We sh saw that recently in the football when the Danish player Christian Eriksen in the peak of physical condition just collapsed and, and his heart stopped beating. He stopped breathing. He had to be resuscitated, brought back to life. And, uh, you know, all of us, we, we just, we're just a heartbeat away from eternity. But the Holy Spirit was still at work. The, the Holy Spirit works in our lives even before we come to Jesus. Now, we're not filled with the Spirit. We don't have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us, but the Holy Spirit is at work within us. He is the restrainer. You know, you might think the world is bad. Can I want to tell you the world would be a lot worse if the Holy Spirit was not keeping people back from the evil that they can commit. I mean, it, it would be like Auschwitz every day in this world if it was not for the work of the Holy Spirit restraining and limiting evil. Also, the Holy Spirit works in our hearts to draw us to Christ. The Holy Spirit leads people to speak to us. The Holy Spirit causes us to think on things. The Holy Spirit gradually brings us to a place where we are confronted with the gospel of Jesus Christ and have to make a decision whether to accept him or reject him. That is the Holy Spirit's 
work bringing us there, bringing us to a place where we are convicted of sin, where we know we're sinners and we need a solution to our sin. Now, the Holy Spirit will not force us to get saved. We make a decision. We can choose to accept Christ or reject Christ, but the Holy Spirit is at work bringing us to that point. But that, but what happens is when you are born again, in the same way that that baby takes its first breath and receives air into its lungs and is now totally dependent on air for the rest of its life, we, at the new birth, we receive the Holy Spirit into us and we are now totally dependent on the Holy Spirit in our spiritual life. We need to walk with him. We need to breathe him in. We need to be in constant contact and relationship with the Holy Spirit if we are going to continue to live as a new creation in Christ Jesus. Now, here's, here's the deal. We have a problem here. Because when a baby takes its first breath, you know, generally there's encouragement. Generally, there's a midwife or there's a doctor, there's nurses there. And if the baby's struggling to breathe, they'll clear the airways and help. So there's there's lots of support. As the baby is growing up, you know, there's there's people supporting that child, caring for that child, taking it to the doctor if it's if it's not well, keeping it away from danger. You've got a whole support system around you as a child, enabling you to keep taking each breath. In the spiritual world, there is an enemy that is trying to stop you from breathing in the Holy Spirit. Your dependence on the Holy Spirit. You have an enemy that wants to break your dependence on the Holy Spirit. An enemy that wants to choke you. An enemy that wants to stop you breathing the breath of God. Now, the good news I've got for you, in case you're feeling a little bit scared or intimidated by the fact that the idea of this enemy trying to choke the spiritual life out of you, and of course that enemy is, is Satan, the adversary, the good news is that he's already failed in his biggest battle. Because the biggest thing, the biggest plan that Satan ever had for your life was to prevent you ever coming to Jesus, to prevent you stepping out in faith and taking that first breath to receive the Holy Spirit into your heart and becoming dependent on the Holy Spirit. Well, once you did that, once you received Jesus, Satan had already lost his biggest battle in your life. So that should give you encouragement for every other spiritual battle you will ever face. You've already won the biggest battle of all. That's, that's brilliant. But here's the deal. You've got this enemy. He wants to choke you. He wants to stop you breathing. He, 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 wants, to, he, he wants you to be like somebody with sleep apnea that will stop breathing to such an extent that they will actually die from the lack of spiritual oxygen. And the physical, that can happen. Uh, you know, the, uh, the actress Carrie Fisher that prayed, played uh, the Princess Lita in Star Wars, uh, she died from sleep apnea. She, she actually just stopped breathing and stopped breathing long enough that it gave her a heart attack from which she, she subsequently died. So you have this enemy that wants to make you stop breathing. And today I just want to give you a few pointers for how you can remain attached to the Lord. How you can remain in the vine, as Jesus said in John 15. How you can keep breathing in the Holy Spirit. How you can keep being dependent. Because you don't ever want to be independent of the Holy Spirit. Trying to be independent of the Holy Spirit is a recipe for disaster and spiritual death. We want to be dependent. We want to be in constant contact, breathing in, breathing out, in contact with the Spirit of God. Well, the scripture that we read tells us a little bit about how we remain dependent on the Spirit. If J Jesus said, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. So he says his words are to remain in us. The scripture, the word of God, is vital to you and I remaining dependent upon the Holy Spirit. Now, I, I'm aware that sometimes it must seem like I'm repeating myself. You know, I'm, I, I preach on many different subjects and I keep coming back, the word of God, the word of God, the word of God. And I am repeating myself and I'm going to continue to repeat myself. 
because the word of God is key to being dependent on the Holy Spirit. The word of God is key to living our life for Jesus. The word of God is sustenance. The word of God is food. The word of God is strength. And we need to be people that are rooted and grounded in the word of God. So I encourage you, read the scripture, pray over the scripture, memorize scripture. You know, there's times you take Bible verses and you hold on to them and you won't let go of them and you apply them into your daily circumstances. This is what Jesus meant when he said, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, the word of God needs to be in our hearts and in our thoughts and in our words and in our dreams. He says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. He's talking there about a healthy prayer life. If you want to be dependent on the Holy Spirit, then you've got to walk a life of prayer. Don't, you know, prayer is not just a little duty that we do for five minutes a day to make us uh, feel like we've done our little bit. Prayer is something that helps you keep breathing. It helps you keep drawing in life from the Holy Spirit. And as you pray, you find you're praying for things that you didn't know you could do and praying for things you never thought you would receive. And God answers your prayer. And you know what? You become more and more dependent upon the Holy Spirit. And Jesus then said, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Part of being dependent on the Holy Spirit is bearing fruit. Now, there's, that means bearing the fruit of the Spirit, obviously, you know, love, joy, gentleness, peace, self-control, all of, all, of, all of these things, but also bearing fruit in reaching out to others with the gospel, bringing other people to know Jesus, sharing your faith with them. And when you think about it, when you share your faith with somebody, you're having to overcome spiritual darkness. It's not just a case of, well, I'll memorize a clever argument and, it, you know, that's going to be so impressive. Anybody I share it with is going to become a Christian. If you think that's what evangelism is about, then you don't understand evangelism or witness at all. It has to be done in the power of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the God of this age, Satan, has blinded the eyes of them that will not believe. And we need the Holy Spirit to remove that spiritual blindness. And that means when you share with other people about Jesus Christ, when you tell other people what Jesus has done for you, when you invite your friends to come to church or to come to an event where they're going to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, then you need to be relaxed relying on the Holy Spirit. You need to be dependent. You need to remember you've had your dependence day and you are now relying on him. And if we do depend on him, we will find that we will bear fruit and we will end up leading people to Jesus Christ and our Father will be glorified by that. And then Jesus says this, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. One of the hallmarks of being dependent on the Holy Spirit is that we walk in love. Why? Because God is love. God is love. And if God is love, then we've got to walk in his love. Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now you remain in my love. You love other people. You've got to walk in love. You've got to show love. You've got to practice love towards people. It's absolutely vital. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm saying this quite a lot lately, but right now, sometimes I'm looking at what Christians are saying and doing, and I'm not seeing a lot of love. I'm seeing a lot of condemnation of people who don't share our moral values. I'm seeing a lot of condemnation and mockery of people that might have a different political viewpoint to us. But sometimes I'm not seeing a lot of love. And love is the hallmark. Love is the evidence that God is in us. Love shows that we are being dependent on the Holy Spirit and receiving of the Holy Spirit because God is love. And if we're in contact with God and we're receiving God and God's moving us, then moving within us, then we are going to be loving people and people will look at us and they will see a significant love in us. Now, it's not just saying, oh, well, well, I do love people. I just don't show it. No, people will see the love in you when you are being dependent upon the Holy Spirit.
if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love. Now, this is a truth that sometimes in, in uh, born again churches and evangelical and Pentecostal churches, sometimes you don't hear this preached, but we've got to keep the commands of Jesus. Now, listen, I'm not talking about salvation by works. I'm not saying you get saved by keeping laws and commands. You don't. You're saved by grace. Grace, uh, salvation is a gift from Jesus Christ. But if you want to keep on walking in love, then you need to obey the commands of Jesus. You know, you, you need to do what Jesus tells you to do. You need to turn the other cheek when somebody attacks you. You, 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 you need to... You need to walk in love with one another because he says a command, love one another. You've got to obey the commands of Jesus. And when we read the Gospels, it's not just to say, wow, look at that. Wasn't Jesus wonderful? And he is. But it's reading the Gospels to see when Jesus commands something, I need to do that. Because obedience is important. Obedience does not save us. Grace saves us. But obedience is important if we are to continue in the love of God and to continue living a life that is dependent upon the Holy Spirit. Obedience is the soil in which love flourishes and grows. And then Jesus said, I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Because another hallmark of the Christian who is dependent on the Holy Spirit, not an independent Christian, not somebody trying to do it their way. The song that says, I did it my way. Many people think that's an admirable approach to life. It's a lousy approach to the Christian life. I don't want to do it my way. I want to do it God's way. And you should do it God's way. And when we try to, to, to walk in obedience and walk in faith and walk in love and have an absolute dependence upon the Holy Spirit and saved by the grace of God, I want to tell you, God releases a joy in you and people will see that joy. You won't be a miserable Christian. You will be a joyous Christian. The joy will just flow out of you. I love the story about the American evangelist, uh, Billy Sunday. He was on a tram one day and uh, he would be in the tram and he's holding, he's standing up, he's holding on. It's a packed tram with loads of people on it. And every time the tram went over a bump, he would go, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And eventually um, the driver stopped the tram and said, listen, you can't be doing that. He said, this is a public tram, not a church. What are you, what are you saying praise the Lord for? And Billy Sunday says, I'm sorry, I can't help it. I'm just so full of the joy of the Lord that every time we go over a bump, a little bit of it spills out. Can I tell you, we need to be people of joy. We need to be people who carry a joy that other people, they just feel better because they're with us. That's what Jesus was like when Jesus said about his joy and, and his joy would be with us. You know, Jesus spread joy wherever he went. Now, he didn't compromise. He didn't mollycoddle people, but he would meet with sinners. He, he would meet with uh, prostitutes. He would meet with drunkards and they invited him to their parties because he just brought a joy with him. Now, he, did, he didn't say to them, oh, you're grand. Just keep on doing what you're doing. You know, he said, go and sin no more. But nevertheless, there was a joy about him that he wasn't seen as a party pooper. He, he was seen as the life and soul of the party because the joy of the Lord was upon him. And I believe the greatest evangelistic revival this nation would ever see would happen if God's people began to live as people of real joy. And, were, and, and, and they demonstrated joy in a way that other people could see. And that's part of being dependent on the Holy Spirit. Thank God when you received Jesus, that was your dependence day. But every day needs to be a dependence day. We don't want to be independent. We can't afford to be independent. We've got to live in absolute dependence on the Holy Spirit of God. And I'm just going to pray that God would help us to do that. Heavenly Father, I just come before you now and I pray in Jesus' name 
that you would enable us to live in an absolute dependence upon you. I pray, Lord, that you will speak to us by your Holy Spirit, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, that communicating with you and receiving of the Spirit will be as natural to us as drawing breath in Jesus' name. Protect us from the one that would seek to come and choke us and stop us breathing. Lord, I pray that love and joy and righteousness will be our hallmark and our inheritance. And Lord, if there's anybody watching this online service who has never yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior, may they now reach out to you and pray a simple prayer along the lines of Jesus. I believe you died for me. I believe you went to the cross for me. I now uh, acknowledge you as Lord and receive you into my life. Come into my heart. Save me that I will live a new life for you where I'm born again and I live by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Lord, I pray that as we, as many of us have prayed that prayer already, I pray there will be those that will pray that prayer for the first time today. And today will be their dependence day in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Uh, we're just going to close with a few notices. Uh, the one is that our online services continue. We are having, of course, live in-person services at Valley McKinney Road every Sunday at uh, 10 o'clock and 12 noon. And uh, there is a legal capacity of 100 seats. So please do book in advance at our Eventbrite link. And, and that, like all of our online content, can be accessed through our website, or that's solidrock.ie, or through our Facebook page, Solid Rock Drogheda. Uh, we will also keep putting up these online services every Sunday morning. We also have a online midweek service on Wednesday at 7.30 called Upon This Rock. It's where I set up a camera in my study and I go through John's Gospel and just share what the Lord is showing me. That's on Wednesday at 7.30. And we have a children's service goes up at uh, 8 o'clock on a Saturday morning. Uh, we also have Take 5, a five-minute devotional message that's posted up every day uh, from Monday to Saturday. So you're welcome to access any of those online services through our Facebook page, through our website or our YouTube channel. And uh, there, we've got all the old ones from weeks and months gone by there that you can still look at and, and be inspired by as well. Uh, thank you all of those of you that are taking part in our 24-7 prayer. The miracle of ongoing non-stop prayer continues. Uh, if you haven't got involved yet, go on, go on the link, follow the link on the website or the Facebook page and book yourself in for an hour and just see what God does in your life when you just pray for one hour. Um, I would also mention about baptisms. Uh, we are continuing doing water baptisms every Sunday until everyone that needs to be baptized is baptized. We can only baptize one household at a time under the current health restrictions and we're trying to be responsible uh, in what we're doing. And uh, so we are acknowledging and obeying those in civil authority over us. So every Sunday we're having, we're baptizing one household. So if there's one person from a household that has come to Jesus, we'll do their baptism one Sunday and then somebody else the next, or if there's a couple or a family or whatever, we'll baptize one household at a time. And we're going to keep doing that until we've all been obedient by going through the waters of baptism after we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you'd like to be baptized in Solid Rock Drahada, uh, please, uh, if you're down at the church, fill out a form, an application form. Otherwise, email me at nick at solidrock.ie. And we do thank you for your giving to the church. Many of you are giving online and I do appreciate that so much. That helps us to budget in advance for the various commitments we have to meet. And the numbers are up on the screen now, the BIC and the IBAN number that you need in order to give online. There's also a PayPal link on the church website. And if you're in our in-person services, there's offering boxes on the back walls where you can give tithes and offerings there as well. However you choose to give, thank you for supporting the work of the Lord and the proclamation of the gospel in these strange times, but exciting times that we are living in. And now may God bless you. We're just going to repeat the grace together to close. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.